Hello, I am Hisu Oh, Associate Professor and Program Director of Dorsum Tick Department at the University of Pacific Arthur A. Dugoni School of Dentistry in San Francisco. In this short video, I would like to share a surgical orthodontic case that used a surgery-first approach to correct a severe skeletal cleft 3 malocclusion. This 19-year-old Korean female presented to the orthodontic department at Jeonnam National University Hospital in Gwangju, Korea. Her main concerns were her anterior crossbite and mandibular prognathism. She had a concave profile, increased low face height, and significant facial asymmetry with the chin deviation to the left. The mandibular dental middle line deviated 9 mm to the left. Her overjet was negative 8 to 10 mm and her overbite was negative 2 mm. The buccal occlusion was beyond a full class 3 molar relationship, about 70 mm from the class 1 position on the right side and 8.5 mm from the class 1 position on the left side. Anterior and posterior cross bites from the maxillary right first premolar to the left first molar were present. There was a mild to moderate crowding in both the maxillary and mandibular arches. The proclined maxillary and retroclined mandibular incisors represented a typical dental alveolar compensation for a skeletal clay 3 malocclusion. The frontal view of Combeam CT image showed the extent of the mandibular skeletal symmetry, which involved a chin deviation of 5 mm toward the left side. The 3D image analysis of facial asymmetry showed that both the frontal and lateral ramal inclinations and the mandibular body length were greater on the right side than on the left side. How would you treat this case? An orthodontics only approach would not be successful in correcting this severe skeletal jaw deformity. Therefore, orthodontic treatment combined with orthognetic surgery was the only viable treatment option for improving facial appearance and restoring normal occlusal function. In fact, the patient had been waiting for growth completion in order to pursue surgical correction. However, the patient had a strong desire to have surgery completed before leaving Korea to start college in the United States. How would you manage the patient's request for treatment? The surgery first approach was offered and accepted to accommodate her time constraint. After completing the prediction of the post-surgical tooth movement and surgical simulation, a two-jaw surgery that included maxillary advancement and differential mandibular setback was performed using a surgery-first approach. How do you think this patient's treatment was managed? Is a surgery-first approach possible in treating this severe skeletal clethrid malocclusion? I'd like to give you a sneak preview of the patient's facial appearance after the treatment. I hope you find the surgery first approach and the outcome of this case interesting. Thank you.